Welcome to Grail Country as we continue our series, uh, Meditations on the Divine Comedy. This morning we're going to be discussing Canto 3. And we are down a couple of participants. This will probably be cycling through uh, different voices as we go through. Um, this morning, it's just Sherry and I. Um, we'll probably be bringing some other people into the conversation. Uh, David will be back. Ted will be back. They just weren't able to make it this morning. Um, but it's going to be a long series because there are 100 cantos for us to get through. So we're doing this every week with whoever we have that shows up. And uh, do we want to say anything, it, 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 you know, reflecting back on our last episode before we dive into today's material, Sherry? Um, I don't think so. I, I no, I, I don't have any thoughts about you, last time. How are you feeling about the series so far, just like two episodes into it? Oh, I'm re I'm super enjoying it, Nate. I I to be honest, like I didn't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I don't know why. Oh, that's well, I just did. Like I said, be I said last time that I didn't know how accessible this poem was, and um, I'm also dealing with people who like I'm the only person who's never read it, right, mm. and who has no instruction in the poem, right, and um. And so I'm, it's just kind of hitting me. Like, I don't even read ahead. I'm, I'm just reading it right now I, for the first time. I think, I right. Read. And I actually think um, there's a certain advantage to that, that, I mean, it's like, I, you know, it's, it's kind of like, to me, there's something exciting about that, especially someone with your, uh, um, poetic mind and intuitive sensibilities to just be coming to the poem completely fresh and just letting it speak to you and saying what comes to you in the yeah. moment. I think what that does is that that really is an important element to have in the conversation because it help it will help people who have become too rigid in how they see it to get shooken up a mm -hmm. bit and, and actually go back to the text, look what's actually there, what's actually there on the page what images are actually there, what yeah. meanings are actually there. And it, it and it's entirely possible that there's something you miss because you've you've trained yourself to look at it in a particular way. So that's I think that's a good thing. And I'm glad yeah. to have you here on board. Yeah, I see the advantage I see the advantage in it. And um but I'm also learning a lot from just listening to what you guys have to say that you know the people who've already done a little digging and um and have a different understand or a better understanding than I do. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just win-win for me. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right. I'm enjoying it. All right. Without further ado, I will share my screen. And I will begin reading. Canto three. I am the way into the city of woe. I am the way to a forsaken people. I am the way into eternal sorrow. Sacred justice moved my architect. I was raised here by divine omnipotence, primordial love and ultimate intellect. Only those elements time cannot wear were made before me. And beyond time I stand, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. These mysteries I read cut into stone above a gate. And turning, I said, Master, what is the meaning of this harsh inscription? And he, then, as initiate to novice, here must you put all the vision of spirit and gather your soul against all cowardice. This is the place I told you to expect. Here you shall pass among the fallen people, souls who have lost the good of intellect. So saying, he put forth his hand to me, and with a gentle and with a, and with a gentle and encouraging smile, he led me through the gate of mystery. Here sighs and cries and wails coiled and recoiled on the starless air, spilling my soul to tears. A confusion of tongues and monstrous accents toiled in pain and anger. Voices hoarse and shrill and sounds of blows all intermingled raised tumult and pandemonium that still whirls on the air forever dirty with it as if a whirlwind sucked at sand 
And I, holding my head in horror, cried, Sweet spirit, what souls are these who run through this black haze? And he to me, these are the nearly soulless whose lives concluded neither blame nor praise. They are mixed here with that despicable core of angels who were neither for God nor Satan, but only for themselves. The high creator scourged them from heaven for its perfect beauty, and hell will not receive them since the wicked might feel some glory over them. And I, Master, what gnaws at them so hideously their lamentation stuns the very air. They have no hope of death, he answered me. And in their blind and unattaining state, their miserable lives have sunk so low that they must envy every other fate. No word of them survives their living season. Mercy and justice deny them even a name. Let us not speak of them. Look and pass on. I saw a banner there upon the mist, circling and circling. It seemed to scorn all pause. So it ran on, and still behind it pressed, a never-ending rout of souls in pain. I had not thought death had undone so many as passed before me in that mournful train. And some I knew among them. Last of all, I recognized the shadow of that soul, who in his cowardice made the great denial. At once I understood for certain these were these were of that retrograde and faithless crew hateful to God and to his enemies. These wretches, never born and never dead, ran naked in a swarm of wasps and hornets that goaded them. The more, the more they fled and made their faces stream with bloody gouts of pus and tears that dribbled to their feet to be swallowed there by loathsome worms and maggots. Then, Looking onward, I made out a throng assembled on the beach of a wide river, whereupon I turned to him. Master, I long to know what souls these are and what strange usage makes them as eager to cross as they seem to be in this infected light. At which the sage, all this shall be made known to you when we stand on the joyless beach, beach of Asheron. And I cast down my eyes, sensing a reprimand in what he said. And so walked at his side in silence and ashamed until we came through through the dead the dead cavern to that sunless tide. There, steering toward us at an ancient ferry, came an old man with a white bush of hair, bellowing, Woe to you, depraved souls, bury here and forever all hope of paradise. I come to lead you to the other shore, into eternal dark, into fire and ice. And you who are living yet, I say, be gone from those who are dead. But when he saw me stand against his violence, he began again. By other windings and by other steerage shall you cross to that other shore. Not here, not here. A lighter craft than mine must give you passage. And my guide to him, Taron, bite back your spleen. This has this has been willed where where what is willed must be, and it is not yours to ask what it may mean. The steersman of that marsh of ruined souls who wore a wheel of flame round each eye stifled the rage that shook his woolly jowls. But those unmanned and naked spirits there turned pale with fear, and their teeth began to chatter at the sound of his crude bellow. In despair, they blaspheme God, their parents, their time on earth, the race of Adam, and the day and the hour and the place and the seed and the womb that gave them birth. But altogether they drew to that grim shore where all must come who's, who lose the fear of God. Weeping and cursing, they come forevermore, and demon Charon, with eyes like burning coals, herds them in with a whistling oar flails on the stragglers to his wake of souls as leaves in autumn loosen and stream down until the branch stands bare above its tatters spread on the rustling ground so one by one the evil seed of adam in its fall cast themselves at its, at its signal from the shore and streamed away like birds to hear their call so they are gone over that shadowy water and always before they reach the other shore a new noise stirs on this, and new throngs gather. My son, the courteous master said to me, all who die in the shadow of God's wrath converge to this from every clime and country, 
and all pass over eagerly. For here, divine justice transforms and spurs them so that their dread turns wish. They yearn for what they fear. No soul and grace comes ever to this crossing. Therefore, if Charon rages at your presence, he will understand the reason for his cursing. When he had spoken, all the twilight country shook so violently, the terror of it bathed me with sweat even in memory. The tear sucked ground gave out a sigh of wind that spewed itself in flame on a red sky, and all my shattered senses left me. Blind, like one whom sleep comes over like a swoon, I stumbled into darkness and went down. Mm -hmm. He's and so do we and so do we <laughs> <laughs> so i do mean we. just reading that right yeah. you end up going you end up feeling that oh yeah it's powerful <laughs> very very powerful i just wanted to very share Dave, david's not with us this morning but i wanted to share his poem uh from his collection yeah. um uh, and i'll put a i'll still put a, i'm going to put a link to david's collection and then the description of every video because He's part of our team, and he and he's a and he's a great poet, and I want people to support his work. So, this and is his this is his poem. I have I have yes. a copy too. Oh, and my, unfortunately, <laughs> mine is the Kindle copy. So, <laughs> do you want to read it? Since I just read, do you want to read his oh, poem sure. on Canto Three? Read it, yeah. If I can do it justice. <laughs> All right. Abandon hope, Inferno, Canto Three. What hope is there? As I pass the gate of sin, where in the unmoored clock of starless sky, this unholy marsh, this wretched refuse bin, will my final place be set before my eye? Will I be kept from either hell or heaven, lukewarm and living without eternal tie? Or will I cross the swamp with sinful brethren, descending down to find purgative tears? I've risen by the work of wicked leaven and must descend in spite of all my fears. It's good. Right, yeah. I, he, it's just, it's really, it's really, really, it is good. And um, I think it, it's interesting because he, 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 I mean, what makes it, what's interesting to me is like he, he immediately puts himself into the first person. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's and great. I, and I think, and uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the the way um, this translation well, has the beginning, has the inscriptions on the gates of hell mm -hmm. say, I am. And to make them like, and Dante is definitely, he's echo, he's like, they are kind of a dark parallel of the I am statements of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so i can see why the translator did that basically to reinforce that parallelism but i checked the Ita the italian says potter me so it's more like through me than i am through um, me. or pot yeah. potter me excuse me uh, i don't speak i wonder italian, I'm, but I'm just gonna i did, I i'm did. gonna check that hollander and see what it says just curious now I have to say that, um, like that last line in David's poem. Yeah, here's actually says, let, me share, let me let me share my screen. It's 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 so. Go ahead. Yeah, the last go go ahead, go ahead. Last line of David's poem. Go ahead. And must descend in spite of all my fears. Right. Um, I don't know about you, but I was getting scared reading that. <laughs> I'm just like, it was so descriptive. And it was so hopeless. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the, the, Don, the the canto that we canto, just read? yeah yeah canto yeah, yeah yeah and 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 it, it it's it's just understandably terrifying. Mm -hmm. You know. Anyway, I just wanted to say that, like, I actually felt that. Right. So, um, whether it's through me, whether whether it's through me or I am, there's definitely like the point. The, the point is, is that. The parallelism with the the I am statements of Christ, and this is sort of like the dark. This is like the darker, the dark side of that, right? 
Yeah. So they're like they, they have the antithesis of those statements. And the fact that it's like it's it's it casts you into the first person, whether it's the I or the me, it's a first yeah. person perspective. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you're feeling it. You're feeling it. Right. And well, but it's but it's like it this this actually has to do with like who's the speaker? Who's saying I am or through me? Yeah, I know. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Right. So it does say in, in the Hollander translation, it says through me. Through me. Okay. But it doesn't actually through all, me the all, way. All, if I say, if I say, if I say I am something or I say through me, or through me, it's not a huge difference. It's still True. like you're still saying that like the source of this is whoever is yeah. speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's also um it can't be merely a place. Because it's like whatever it is, it's clearly showing you that it's it's hypostatic, right? That it's like it has a personal perspective. Did you say it can't be a place? It can't be only a place. It can't be merely a place because only like, a place. Right, right. Well, of course, I mean, the, I mean that I mean that that raises the question of like whether a place is ever only a place, but let's yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> I want to. I, I. I like. I. I, I want to get into like right off the bat, like like, just like your gut feeling, like who's speaking, who's speaking here. I kind of like when we were before we started recording, I said something that kind of like telegraphed what I was thinking about this, but I want to know what you think about the whole canto. No, no, no. Just or about this, this inscription. What, who is speaking these words on the gates of hell? Who's uttering them? Well, my first thought was the sufferings of Christ. That was my first thought, right? Of, of Christ moving down into hell itself, right? The harrowing of hell and, and all the rest of it. Um. And because, because because this translation says, I am the way, it's just like, boom, you know, it's like neon in a sense, right? Right. Um, but, but, these but, are... I, but I don't know. Right. Okay. 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 So let me go back to the, uh, to the text here. I got to scroll back up. Whoops. I went too far. This PDF is hard to navigate. Uh, I do want to. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna. You, while I'm looking for, while I'm look, while I'm trying to navigate this PDF, if you have something to say, by all means, do so. Um, I got it now. Well, it's a, it's a. This place is a place of nothingness, right? It's not, it's like he says, their lives concluded neither blame nor praise. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they are mixed here with that despicable core of angels who were neither for God nor Satan. Right. Um, I thought, I thought, <laughs> I thought that was a rather, a rather bold thing to say. Dante does Probably not like a... fence centers. Obviously, Dante does not like fence centers. <laughs> No. And uh, and then there's another thing that leans in that direction, too, I, that I saw here. I just want to see if I can find it. Um, hey, oh, yeah. At once, I understood for certain these were of that retrograde and faithless crew, hateful to God and to his enemies. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm and like, in fact, I think there's a line that suggests that the reason that they're not in hell is so that the souls and the the souls of the damned in hell will not have something to glory over. It's like, well, at least we're better than these people. Yeah. Right. So it's like he's saying that they're worse than the damned. Like. Yeah. Because like they're nothing. 
they're not they have not they're, they're they don't nothing. have names they have no name right yeah does he say that somewhere yeah he Some says he calls that? them he says they're not even allowed a name that's actually in the text yes yeah uh yeah. hold on a second let me control f and i'll find the nameless uh my pdf might not be searchable but it's there it is there yeah um maybe i can but he, he says that he says that they don't have names uh so i'm going to here okay so here's what i'm suggesting i have it Go justice ahead. deny them even justice deny them even a name yeah so um right that is page 32 I'm here already. Okay, so where is it? No, that's it. That's like justice denied them even a name. So yeah, that's how that yeah, that's yeah. Their name, they're nameless. And I would say, so here's the thing. So we have we're we're conscious this this see if see if see if you're tracking see if see if you're tracking me here. Yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> so what we have here, we have a we have a sort of a of of a of an antichrist i am antichrist i am statements here right at the like yes. the the i am statements that are on the gates of hell are the i am statements of the antichrist they 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 are uh they are uh first person personified rejection of everything that christ stands for right right the point is, is that both, both the, both, both hell and Christ, who is the gate of heaven, come through the I am. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> so it, so it, it, there's a way in like the this is this is what i was trying to hit when i said that before we started recording when i said that there's an underworld within each of us right that's what i yeah did. yeah i'm like well more about and then i said more about that in a minute right right i think that like that's what this is i, I that's where i have to go with this it's like yeah well okay so i wrote i wrote this this morning to somebody who asked me a question i said and don't forget that god created leviathan and behemoth and defends their existence these things remain and stand fast and we either learn to live in harmony with them or we break into pieces because of them everything is unto our salvation right Right. And so when I'm reading this canto, I'm I'm thinking in those terms. Right. So you have you have an antichrist statement, but there is no antichrist without Christ. Right. <laughs> right. So all three things, even the antichrist come through Christ. Right. In in a sense, like if you want to get, you know, really. um I don't know what the word is, but without Christ, there is no antichrist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and even Christ had to go down to the depths, right? So, so because it's, you know, the next thing says sacred justice moved my architect. I was raised here by divine omnipotence, primordial love, and ultimate intellect. Right. So this is interesting because this is a contrast from the first part of the the first part, right? You have these 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 first person kind of statements, right? There's this yeah. there's, there's a personification going on, right? So mm -hmm. it's as if hell were a person, as much as a place right and just and and hell is describing who hell is 
Yes. And then it transitions to talking about it as a creation of God. Yeah. So mm -hmm. where is the where is the bridge between those things? Between between that like like how that that seems like to like there is a okay. So, so sacred justice moved my architect. So he's still speaking. Yeah. So Hell is speaking as if, as a creature. Yes. Essentially. As a created thing. As a created thing. And it is, and has a, and is a, is clearly a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, okay. So here's something to think about. He's still with Virgil, right? Do I have that right? Yeah. He's still with okay. Virgil. Virgil's still his guide. And so Virgil, it says, here you shall pass among the fallen people, souls who have lost the good of intellect. So saying, he put forth his hand to me, and with a gentle and encouraging smile, he led me through the gate of mystery. Well, this also connects and, to, uh, that, actually, that actually connects to what I was saying about the underworld too. Because like th those have lost the, the 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 good of intellect, it's like there are there are parts of your of you of your structure as a person that are beyond the light of your in like they are not accessible to the light of your intellect. Yeah, there. Like are I'm wondering what, what the Italian word here is for intellect because is this the noose uh, that they're talking have about? A, I don't I have I have enough Latin to make me dangerous and no Italian. <laughs> um but uh yeah and I said I said I said par it's actually so in the, the first statement it's per me, so it is still through me. So I don't know yeah. why this translation says I am, but that doesn't the fact that it's it's uh it's definitely talking well, it's, as a person, it's person. is the, the yeah, point. It's personal. And then you're saying what was the word you were looking for? In intellect it's intellect? uh it's uh, uh yeah verse 19 i think or, uh, i don't know what these numbers are or or, or lentileto so it's like i'm wondering i'm wondering if dante is leaning towards more of an understanding of the intellect as the noose like because we moderns oh. think of intellect as intel intelligence or you know, our ability to reason, but um, I'm not sure. I'm sure Richard Rowland could tell us, but I'm not sure what, what at this point in time of the writing of this poem, I'm not sure what, what understanding they held. Uh, um, just, just looking, um, it says intellect or mind in the Cambridge um, Italian to English dictionary. Yeah. So, um i think that like they're beyond re they're, they don't have any reason is the like the light of reason has gone from them okay. and i think like i think i think but yes i think to think of it as noose or like reason with a capital r in the the coleridgian because they, he does say right. before that that he says that they're soulless or somewhere later he says that they're soul yeah they are these are the nearly soulless whose lives concluded neither blame nor praise, right? So I don't know. But um, the, the the reason I point out that Virgil puts his hand to him and, and with a gentle, encouraging smile leads him through the gate, to me, it tells me that Virgil's not afraid for Dante. Virgil knows that this, this journey through here, this portion uh, yeah, of his journey is is um he it needs to be made right for dante's like unto his salvation right like 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 i said in my in my in my own quote so um and it's what kind I, what, of like what, it's kind what, of like i think about the parent who who lets go of the bicycle for the first time the kid's like right. don't let go don't let go right and the parent right. has that gentle encouraging smile because they know 
the kids ready. They know they're ready and they know that they can do it and they know they need to experience that. Right. Um, and, and then there's, yeah. So there's something really good happening here in the mm-hmm. midst of all this terror. Right. Right. Um, but where is it located? Why is the, I, I really, really want to dig into why this, like this, like this hell speaking as a person, as much as a place. Like, I think that's important. And I think well, it what has do you, to. What are you I, thinking? Well, I'm suggesting I'm 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 suggesting it has to do with the microcosmic macrocosmic relationship of uh, 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 of man and and the world, uh, the mm-hmm. cosmos, and I'm suggesting that it is saying that the although it does say. Although it does suggest that God is the architect of it at the same time as it speaking in a first person perspective. So, well, I don't think that that's any different than uh, the microcosm cosmos too, well, you know, yeah. like, like, because, because like George McDonald, he helps me so many as so much to understand this, these things, because he says the world is the human being turned inside out. Right. Yeah. So whatever, whatever is out there is in here. And so uh, the place, you know, it, let's say there's a place you have to go to, you have to get up and go to. Right. You, you also have a place within you that you have to get up and go to. Right. right. And, and I think, I think we understand that in the sense that if we're really, if, you know, when we have those moments of desperation, we call it Right. right. It's in those moments of desperation where we where we get up and go to that dark, darkest place, the well, one that the, we never want to go to. So let's go back to this idea of the of the light of the light of reason or the light of intellect or the news. I think it's I think it can be all of those things that I think it, it can be all of those things at once. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, the like you know, it's kind of like a, um, or, you know, love, which is both mind and heart in Hebrew. Right. So yeah. it's that like so Dante is That's able what I to, think too. What, what able Dante is able to descend into the depths, which I think are yes, it is in fact, it is the cosmic underworld, but it is also the depths within Dante. Right. And it's the, the it's the time. ultimate self yeah, and it's the ultimate self-examination, right? right. Like so yeah. So the underworld is within us as well as being mm-hmm. like within as 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 well there's there being a uh like a, a cosmic underworld there's also a, yeah. a microcosmic underworld this is the yes this is the connection that i was talking about so you well i go, just want to say I, yeah if you have me. light if you have a light not only can you go into those steps you must yeah you have to because you if you don't ever go into those depths, then you will allow them to overtake you. Well, then you're not and being honest with yourself. And, and you'll lose <laughs> the light. Who you are. And you'll lose the light, yeah. right? And then yeah. then then they possess you. Then then that's the path of madness. And you're deceived. You're right. bullshitting yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. And you you lose all reason. And then so then you enter into but but then you enter into it, but you become locked in. You don't ever get out. Mm-hmm. Like that's the, except by grace, but, <laughs> but there's a or way to, what was that? Well, maybe you're lucky enough to have a guide like Virgil. Right. Right. Maybe you're lucky enough to have a guide. Way. You right. know, because that, that demon didn't want him in there. Right. The demon's like, no, not, you're not, you're not supposed to be here. Right. And, and, and Virgil says, no, no, he is. But why does that? Bite, uh, that's like back your But why does the demon care, right? Why oh, is it? Why why is the demon disturbed <laughs> by by his presence? Because there's a there's an there's a 
there's an order to these things. There's a, there's a, like, this is, this is the thing, like, this gets right into, um, for me anyway, this gets right into the whole idea of Leviathan, right? Mm-hmm. Of what Leviathan represents, this chaos, right? This, this, and, and, and like I said to Jess, I think that chaos theory is, is the most helpful when you, th- to think about these things, because, what appears to be random and and patternless and for us pattern pattern is is that's how we read the world mm-hmm. we literally read the world by by seeing patterns right and and those patterns allow us to make sense of cause and effect and so on but when when you when you experience chaos you there is no pat there's no you can't discern the pattern. pattern right there's no pattern there but there is one according to chaos theory underneath it all mm-hmm. and it's a beautiful pattern actually mm-hmm. and it circumambulates something that is nameless or ineffable actually right <laughs> which is really interesting so um and this is what leviathan is to me anyway he's he's this chaos monster right who doesn't have any conceivable reason of to be you know we're like double oh, well, just destroy that that needs to be destroyed and and um and so this is this is i think what's happening here there's there is this incredible pattern underneath everything and it's a beautiful pattern right well, and it's they, the pattern they, that go ahead that is below us okay it's the things it's like this is the thing about chaos theory the pattern is so deep below that you can't see it right and it's it's like what's that verse things above the earth and things under the earth right and and that's that's what i see i see the chaos pattern as being one of those things under the earth it's 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 not like you said perceivable to us and and yet it's what carries us because it's under us right we stand on it and if you think about the word understand, it it's what gives us that deeper wisdom. If yeah. you know, yeah, if that makes any sense. Well, I mean, I would say this. I mean, like from a, I don't know what I want to say about on the on on the cosmic level. I would say that like we have eschatological imagery that suggests like that the elimination of the underworld. Like, so God in Job definitely like he, yeah, he seems proud of Leviathan, but in, but in Revelation, like Leviathan and, and Behemoth are feasted upon. Right. But that, but what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that they give you what? Sustenance. It suggests, well, yeah, you're eating it. So it does suggest integration. <laughs> I mean, it does, in fact, I, I, yeah, it does actually, it may, it makes Jung seem like he was onto something. Yeah, it, you're you're eating it. And so it's it's becoming you. You're becoming it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's giving you sustenance. It's giving you the ability to survive. Um like there, there's a whole bunch of stuff there that we just don't want to we don't want to talk about it. It's really hard to talk about Nate because because yeah. Like yeah. like when he when he says when he says that where is that? Um let me see here. These were of that retrograde and faithless crew, hateful to God and to his enemies. What is he saying with that? Like You can't, you know, the way, if I just take that for what it says, it, to me, it says you, you should, you can't be hateful to God and, and not, and also not to his enemies. And I think it has everything to do with the transformation, you know, like, I don't think things are destroyed. I think things are transformed. That's why, that's why Leviathan becomes a useful product. Okay. It, it, um, you know, it becomes a covering too, right? Like the skin of Leviathan. 
is the tent under which you feast. Yeah, on a Leviathan. living a living thing that is consumed is not. Uh, it doesn't. It it doesn't cease to exist. It's just no. It becomes it, something else. Its form has changed. It becomes something else. Right. But it's not. It's not. Uh, it's it's not. It's not uh, annihilated. No, and 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 it's not destroyed because it's. You know, to be annihilated or destroyed would mean that it was super superfluous, and I don't think that anything is super superfluous. You know, um, and and according to Dante. It's absolutely not superfluous, right? Dante has to go through this. He has to he has to take that journey. And Virgil gives him a warm and encouraging smile mm -hmm. at the at the beginning of it. So yeah. Um There's, there's the next line there after the enemies thing. These wretches never born and yeah. never dead. Never born and never dead. That that struck me too. It's like, oh. There What do you think? What do you think he's saying there? Well, I think of the quote from St. Ignatius. Oh, actually. see, I, I actually think about what Tom Berg says about how, about life and death. And I think about like the notion that it is, that it is uh, the, the, like, that it is the creation that is truly life. And that we operate, we operate under a confusion about what life mm -hmm. is. Well, that's why I think of Saint Ignatius. So that's why Christ. that's how you can say, even though they existed on Earth and lived like they they lived lives on Earth, that they were never yeah. born, because they right. never they they never actually entered into life. So Saint Ignatius says here. It is better for me to die in Christ than to be king over the ends of the earth. I seek him who died for our sake. He's, he's, he's on his way to Rome to be martyred. Right. I desire him who rose for us. Birth pangs are upon me. Right. Suffer me, my brethren. Hinder me not from living. Right. Do not wish me to die. So for him, not being martyred would be to die. Right, and because the because the world that we inhabit, this one, like I know people are going to say this sounds gnosticky or whatever, but this is just like the the world that we live in and experience is it's defined by death. Like there's no like it is death is its ruling principle. Yeah, and and. And what what the canto says here is that they never get to die. That's their problem, right? Right. They're trapped in that. Like it's <laughs> like yeah, yeah, right. So this is like right, and this it is, says right like, here, this... master, master, what gnaws at them so hideously? Their lamentation stuns the very air, and he says they have no hope of death. And so think about that St. Ignatius quote, because after that, he says, Nate, suffer me to receive the pure light when I shall have arrived there. I shall become anthropos, a human being. Human being. Yeah. Okay. And I think about, I think a lot about um, the, uh, the Valley of Dry Bones, uh, because the Valley of Dry Bones, like a child in the womb, starts out as soft tissue. Right. And it's all like the heart and the organs and, you know, and the last thing to come is the skeleton in a, in a, in a fetus. And, um, and in the Valley of Dry Bones, it's, it's, it's backwards. You have the bones, the skeleton and that, and that skeleton gets enfleshed. Right. So it's like, it's like a backwards birth, which is to me, very much what 
Saint Ignatius is talking about. He's talking, for us it is, right? We think that death is an end or a consequence, but for Saint Ignatius, it's the, only the beginning, right? right. It's, 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 it's his passage into life and what? it's where he becomes a human being. And this is exactly what the Valley of Dry Bones is. It's like a backwards incarnational process, right? Right. And maybe, I, maybe it's even like maybe it's even really what we're looking at. <laughs> no, but I think that's. I think you're. I think you're right though, because that's that's actually implied in Dante's line there. Because the reason that they are denied, the, the reason that they can't be born, is because they cannot die. Those two things are you can't, can't die. You can't pull those apart, right? So no. in order to be born you have to be able to to die but what you need what you need to be able to what you and specifically what you need to be able to die to is the 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 false life that you think is life that is really death you you need so what you need to die to is death <laughs> but you need to see that it's death that you're dying to right in order to be able to do it so this is this is this is something that's been on my mind yeah. a lot lately and i, I and i've been like reading a lot of like uh like lesser known david bentley hart interviews where he says some pretty like amazing stuff mm -hmm. and um and this is not this is me talking and not david but like one of the one of the things that reading those is reinforced for me is that the biggest difference between the christian worldview and the pagan worldview is that we there is no there really is no hope of overcoming death in the pagan worldview it's just like the cycle goes on and on and on it's the closed world of the it's, serpent. It's, yeah it's yeah. A, it's the closed world of the serpent resignation or escape yeah mm -hmm. are the only paths that are open right yeah so and so like you have like some of the better some of the better some of the better, you know, non-Christian paths um, that have developed, you know, in time, like will offer you some means of escape from, but it's not really a trans, but there's no transformation because death is still yeah. there. So what Christianity has the audacity to, to bring into the picture is the conquest of death. Like that's, yeah. That's our defining. That's that is really what the, this is why this is why the central message of the gospel for the apostles was what was was Christ crucified. Like that's like. Well, see, this is like this is this is this is why just like the statement he Christ tramples death by death. This is the, and and right. and he puts on the corrupt the corruptible right, and what is the corruptible? It's us. It's it's humanity. We are corruptible. Right. Right. We are death. And our like cos and the we cosmos that living. we are living in is a dead one. It's not. It's right. not. It's not like in order to in, like in order to enter into the creation, you have to you have to be able to die to this dead cosmos. Like there's no other way. There's no other way. Like the God Man had to die. Right. And, and, and so, you know, so in order why to do enter you the think kingdom... you get to buy like, that's why this is, this is why transhumanism is so appalling to me. Right. It's because it's like, you want to offer people to live in the cosmos of death forever. That's hell. Well, and, and it, and it also doesn't realize that like St. Ignatius, that death is life. And, and I know that this sounds like I, I I've got, several people running around in my head right now like yosef <laughs> and oscar <laughs> going oh, yes it's a death cult it's a death you know this is so un, un unhealthy but it isn't unhealthy like okay so let me let me put it this way i think oscar here's the thing oscar's interesting to me because i think oscar ultimately agrees with us and it's just like a semantic like he can't well, get over he, it's probably pushing us to articulate this better. And I think that yes. there's a, there's a, utility, there's a very some... good utility to that. Yeah. And, and, uh, and honestly, I've only ever heard anyone articulate it well. And that's father John bear. And he, he's not explicit. 
like it's implied you okay because be. because when be. you start getting explicit about this it gets really right. weird you can't be but, like, uh, I, I see christians botching this all the time too though like yes and, and part of the one of the things that causes um christians to botch it is by like well not they become thinking, gnostic not thinking process that, not thinking because that be, not thinking that uh that ancient folklore and mythology because it was formed at a time like you know that happened historically like before the incarnation doesn't have any hints at it but it's like that's not how the incarnation works <laughs> no and it has you, retrograde action it has let me retrograde just finish my, my my original thought sure. here because uh when we talked about when we talked about my my body problem in that conversation we had on this channel, um, I mentioned the fact that in Genesis, thorns are what represent suffering, right? And they're also that that chaos, right? That you know, God tells Adam and Eve to go out into the world, and and they're going to have to now toil, right? And 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 derive their their existence from the earth. But it's going to have thorns in it. And so it's going to be frustrating and, you know, chaotic, right? It's not always going to work out the way they think it will. It's not paradise anymore. Okay. And what is Christ crowned with? Thorns. His crown is thorns. Okay. And 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 that's, you know, and Genesis, uh, Revelation calls us and Christ overcomers right that we are overcomers so that's if you if you think about an occupational title that's it <laughs> for us you know that's what we are we're overcomers and so we have to overcome the the suffering we have to overcome the thorns we have to overcome all the problems that we come across and um and when this happens we die okay so let's just imagine we have this idea, okay, I'm going to I'm going to plant a garden and I'm going to grow all these cucumbers. And you plant the garden and you grow the cucumbers and then the mice come and overnight they eat everything. What does that do to you? <laughs> it's humbling. Mm -hmm. It it makes you die inside, right? You're like, "Oh, okay, that was a good idea, but it wasn't the best idea." You know, I have to overcome this now. I, I was naive. I was whatever, you know, that was, uh, um, I was at, I was at services with my wife last night because it was, it's Rosh Hashanah and, uh, her, her rabbi, um, during his, uh, I don't know whether to call it as, is it still a sermon? I don't know. <laughs> homily. Call it a homily. <laughs> homily. I have a homily is like, that's like Catholic or Anglican though. You know, I don't know. And it's Orthodox. Like, and or yeah, and Orthodox, right? So that's like the high church Christians say homily. I don't know what the right is. What's the Jewish word for it? I don't know. Is there a Jewish? Well, yeah, word? but homily was an old Greek Greek word. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's what. Well, it's called a sermon for saints. lack yeah. of a better term, right? Okay, and actually, I <laughs> that sounds so Protestant. But, well, but the thing is, <laughs> well, here's the thing though. He talked for a, like a Protestant length of time, so. Okay, um, well then, let's call um, it that then. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the things he said, one of the things he said was that uh, um, men plan, men, you know, men plan God laughs. So, yeah, 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 like exactly yeah. what you were I've got right about. now. Like I've got I've got a grapevine on my house and I've got all these grapes hanging there and they're really beautiful. And I this morning I went out and I looked down on the ground and there's all these little black pieces of something. And I picked it up. I'm like, that's grape skin. And I look up. And there's like, all my clusters of grapes are are being eaten by mice. Like I just I just built them a highway <laughs> to food, you know. Like they they're like ooh, you know, right up the grapevine, and and they're yeah. It's just we're having a bad year with mice this year. Oh really? And and so that's the first that's the first time that we've um that I've seen that that they're just feasting on my grapes. <laughs> There's uh one of the we craziest, planning God laughs. One of, there's the, one of the craziest stories in uh, Herodotus's histories is a story about 
uh, mice go eating the bowstrings of a of an enemy army. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, of course, you know, modern historians like you know laugh at the is this ridiculous? They're so bad right now. Like I went outside no, on the deck but... upstairs, and and there's the butt end of our log wall, you know, and I came around the corner and this mouse like looking me in the eye it's 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 on the butt end of the logs you know and it's just it's just walking up and down my house it's no problem yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. so many of them right now <clears throat> yeah so okay so i want to talk about like i i still let's see i want to so there's an underworld within us do you would you agree with that like and I oh, think yeah. that's why the personification. That's why it's appropriate to personify hell because there's a way in which. Well, that yeah, that's what Lewis says, too, right? Right, yeah. The hell is hell is within us. Yeah. Right. It's locked from the inside. Yeah. Um, and. But. It's also outside of us. Yeah. Okay. Like, Yes. Like, you know, like I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that it isn't like, it's not just a psychological hell. Like, yeah. I don't want to say that I, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that hell is only a state of mind, but I think that there's yeah. a way of, there's a way of, um, although I don't like, I just, well, I want to, I want to, I, I just want to so focus on this. Well, no, I just want to, uh, I don't want to give the wrong impression here. Okay. When you say there's no like if you understand if you think that there's something that can be just a state of mind, then you I don't think you're you're making a fundamental misunderstanding about what the nature of reality is and what our relationship right. to it is. Because yeah, we're co-creators of it. Inevitably so. Well, we bring, yeah. That, like the hell the hell that exists within us is 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 the hell that we experience on the outside too because we bring it into being right like because they're yeah if if that's where we live in hell here then we do live in hell outside of ourselves yeah we project it outside of us into the world yeah we would whether we're yeah if we're living if we're internally living in hell Hell is yeah. what we're going to project outside onto the world for sure, and, and the uh, and the opposite. If we are, if we yeah. are, if we are, if we are seeing the creation and living into the creation and not the and not the cosmos, and we're we're seeing beyond the illusory cosmos of death into the true creation, which is right there. It's not like it's two separate realities. No. It's just two different modes of perceiving the same reality. Well, like you said, you said, you, you know, like you're saying that it's personified as in, you know, the gates of hell. It says, I am, I am, right? And yeah. me and or through me, my yeah. architect and so on. But. Um, yeah, but who is the architect? Well, let me just finish my thoughts. So there's also the fact that for me anyway, creation itself is a person <laughs> yes right sure so that's why that's why i think um, not only is know, it it's a person, person it, it's not personal only... to you but it's also there's a person out outside of you like there's this creation well i mean it's not even really outside of you, you can't speak it of, of it in those terms but you know if you want to make that distinction you can say there's an inside of me, there's my microcosmos, and then there's this macro cosmos, but they're, they're both persons. So let right? me, this, yes, absolutely. There, let me find, oh, there's something I want to find that is, I was actually just talking about this with Mike, with, with Michael. This is from, this is from Barfield. Uh, this is uh, on the essay, Coleridge's I and Thou from Romanticism Comes of Age. Uh, let's see where to start this. He himself, therefore, was free to carry the problem of the one and the many onto another plane. The question, so what he, what he said before this is that Coleridge very, the, the 
the kind of the perception that the Christian mystic or the yogi gets that I am that mm. was just automatic. Like cult that came very, very easily, easy to Coleridge. It was yes. like, it was almost like a default for him. That was, yeah. and, and it usually is these like poets tend to be like that. Like that yeah. part is easy for poets. Cause you can yeah. actually, if you don't have the imagination to become the thing you're observing, you can't write good poetry. Or to be in relationship to it, at right. least. Exactly. Yeah. So it's hardly surprising that a brilliant poet would have that. In, so, in, yeah. so so now we say, so, so he got that. And he says, so on another plane, the question for him became rather granted that the individual is ultimately the whole. So he got that part easy, right? Mm -hmm. To explain how more than one individual can be the same whole yet without ceasing to be separate individuals. like So it's like, this is actually the problem. Yes, it's always the one and the many. It was, like, not, the thing it was not many phenomena equals one self, but many selves equals one self, which he had to explain. Mm -hmm. For this very definition of the term and self involved the coincident reality of other selves. Thus, with Coleridge, as with Plato, the problem of the one and the many became... As his mind developed, the even more quintessential problem of same and other. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I was just listening to Kathleen Rain's Nature, The House of the Soul, because I, I I do it. I listen to it regularly as a kind of a meditation thing. That's a good. It's really and good. It's really good. And and uh, in there, she mentions that Coleridge took his child out, his crying child he had the Coleridge had some kind of love for the moon. Like he sought the moon out whenever he could. And his child was crying and he took the child outside and showed the child, the moon and the child stopped crying. And she makes the point. What is the moon to the child? It's neither food nor shelter, right? It's none of those things. And that's all the child needs. Right. <laughs> But there's something there that calms this the, the crying child. Well, that's and, the, it, and it's it's the fear it's, of God. It's, it's the fear of God that Dante says the souls that he's talking about here in this canto have lost. Like that's the thing that I know it sounds strange to strange as as the fear of God, but that actually like I think if we understand uh, the fear uh, of God exactly, it's the sense of wonder. Uh, like and, and reverence like wonder and reverence is what the fear of a sense of wonder and reverence is what the fear of god is it's not like right. oh my god he's gonna get me he's a bad guy in the sky that's not what it means no it's this it's the it's the thing that allowed the child to be calmed by the presence of the moon right but and it's that's also what speaking these souls to the... have lost so it's all about its yeah. vision right yeah they're literally in the dark like there's no like it's a it, it's there's no light for them and he tells us that they've lost the light of intellect or, or reason so they're just they're not able to see things as they are so they're trapped in their own false perceptions but they don't even to me it seems like they have no perception like they right they, right right they're neither this nor that like they're you know that they and 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 to me that 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 it lacks courage to be that person which suggests right? that there's which is good this is good now this is actually since we're already in barfield then this suggests why <laughs> this suggests for why for barfield like final participation is different from original participation in that like final participation is absolutely definitely it is a willed act it is something yeah. that you do hypostatically. With, right. But with a certain, like a lot, there's, you're not acting out of naivety. You're acting out of, out of a, a place of understanding. Like there's, there's some kind of, like Steiner talks about this, right? This is like the marriage of, of spirituality and science. And so like the, in Adam and Eve represent this like childlike state, this naivety, and you don't want to stay there. You want to grow up. Right. You want to become real and, and learn something so that when you move forward, you, you, as Harding would say, marry the sage with the child, 
right? So the yeah, you the, never want to lose the touch with the you never want to lose touch with the you that is like Coleridge's child that is able to be calm by looking up at the never. beauty of the moon. You don't ever want to lose that. But that's you not, can't. But that's not ultimately enough. Because as your sense, no. as you evolve as an individual person, or as we evolve as a species in our consciousness, we're going to, as we begin to develop our own sense of identity, we're going to lose the strength of that. Like it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be challenged. Well, this is, and and it it becomes a choice too, and like, it becomes an effort. About... It becomes a deliberate effort to keep it. Yeah, because like I'm thinking about that dream I had, Nate, where I, I went down to the basement, which is a subconscious, right? And I rescued the child and I carried it all the way up to yeah. the top. That's consciousness. Right. And 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 at in that room at the top was an old woman, right? Who was transforming into all these different things. And she was me. And and so I I had to make the conscious effort to save the child. And I had to carry the child. Right? I didn't let the child just follow me behind. I had to carry it and I carried it right here. And you couldn't right avoid Right where the, where the Theotokos carries the Christ child. And you, you said you had to go down in the basement, <laughs> right? Is that right? Yeah, that's the right. subconscious. So the, yeah, right, which is right. And the subconscious, I mean if the, if if that is one way of conceiving of the fact that we have an underworld as a subconscious. I think that's yes, yes. We totally have an underworld. Oh, I have I have the greatest example. Okay. So I had this me and my dreams. I'm sorry to bore people if you know, but Your this is not this, boring. This so I had this for years, years. I had this dream that I would be in the kitchen working and it was my home, and I had a husband and children. And there would be this door and it would, it would terrify me. Okay. It would literally just looking at the door terrified me. Like I was just gripped with fear. And sometimes that was all my dream was. And the dream was constantly progressing. So that one day I opened the door and I was really having to overcome my fear. And I opened the door and this little breeze came up and it was cold and it was dark down there. And then I slammed it shut because it felt like it was alive and I was afraid of it. And then another dream, I opened the door and I decided to take a step down and this wind came up. And the more I tried to descend, the more the wind blew against me. And so it was like I wasn't allowed down there and, and closed the door. Anyway, I ended up talking to my psychiatrist about this dream because I had this dream for years, mm -hmm. years and years and years. And it was it was always progressing to different. And she said to me, I want you to lucid dream this. So I want you to think about whatever you can do to get down those stairs. She said, that's your subconscious and you're afraid of it and you need to get down there. And so she said, I don't care what you have to do. If you have to put a pot on your head and, you know, wear a, wear a life jacket, <laughs> just imagine yourself. Right. So I clothed myself in the armor um, from scripture right the breastplate of righteousness and <laughs> that's what i did and then i went to bed and i actually dreamt i actually lucid dreamt and i got down there and um it, there was a lot of wind okay like i was like leaning into it and i got all the way down to the bottom and when i got there it was this beautiful house and it was an like it was another house under my house and it was filled with old um, handmade tools and boxes and boxes and boxes and rooms and rooms. And I, and, and I was just like totally invited in to open all the boxes. And so my dreams after that were spent unpacking these boxes and looking at these tools right? And imagining, and it was all about creativity, like, because all the tools were, gave me the ability to be creative, right? And then it was at that time that I had that epiphany about dividing my time 50-50 between my high conscientiousness and my high creativity, right? 
And um, anyway, so I, I'm just saying that uh, that my subconscious was in a terrifying underworld. It was a terrifying underworld. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, I don't it know always why. is. But it was, it always was. is. It always <laughs> is here. And that's like, I think, I think mm -hmm. we can see like the, the souls that are trapped in it here and Dante that are trapped in the, that are trapped in the underworld, right? The souls that are trapped there, they're trapped there because they have no light yeah. and they have no guide and they have no fear. They actually, he tells us that they go into it willingly. Like, as if it's like, like, like as if becomes like, but they, they, they rush across to get to Karen's boat. They want to go across. They, they want to go in. It becomes a strong desire for them because, well, and that's Terrifying. like, if you go, well, me. right. Well, right. But here's the thing. It's like, if you like, so you need to go into your own depths, but if you don't do it with, if you, but you've got to do it, you got, you should do it with some fear, which means that it need you need courage and you need better have a light source, right? Yeah. You can't avoid it on the one hand, but you need light. Armor sounds like a good idea. It's <laughs> kind of like a D and D game, right? <laughs> you have, better have light sources. <laughs> You should have some kind of strategy. I was shocked, nope. you know, that that actually worked because I thought I, I never lucid dreamt before that. And I never lucid dreamt again after that. It was only that night that she told me to do that. And I did it and it worked. I was just shocked. Right. I was shocked. But once you actually, yeah. but here's the thing though, is once you actually made the move to go down, you found it was different than what you expected. Yeah. Yeah. But what if you had um, gone down in the dark? What if you hadn't had armor, right? What if you had Well, there was dark there. It was dark and it was and there was this cold death-like wind and it and it was it was trying to hinder me and I had to really lean in. Like I really had to push myself down there. It was not easy, right? Um but obviously because I put the I put the armor on, I was warrior i was a warrior type right like right. i had the courage yeah. right i was right you had the courage um, so how were you yeah. able to without any light source how were you able to see what was down there i couldn't see until i got down there okay once i got down there i could see but right but, so but, but that's um, what i'm asking I'm, I'm asking you if you can remember from the dream it's like when you got down there and you were able to see Obviously, and if the it wind, was pitch, yeah, if it was it, pitch dark, you wouldn't have been able to see, right? So, if you were able yeah. to see, then there had to be light coming from somewhere. And the answer could be it could be from coming from you. Maybe, yeah. I just know I, I, I couldn't really see, and it was very cold. It was okay. very, it was repulsive. It was repulsive, like to go down there. Like I gotcha. Any any normal person would have not gone down there, right? Because it's too cold and it was too windy. It was like gale force winds, and um, and then just the, looking at the doorknob terrified me. Oh like, wow! Gripped with terror, right? And uh, and then you open it up and it's like this little cold breeze, you know, this little warning breeze <laughs> comes out, right? And then you as you descend, it just gets more and more intense, and it's dark. That's kind of how it went, but um. But yeah, like, I, it's obvious, I, like when I'm talking about my dream is not like this, you know, but there are, there are some parallels and, um, but it's just interesting. So this is a, here's a question. Um, I know that there are circles in Dante's hell, right? There's circles of hell. Yeah. We're right? at the very, we're at the very, so we're, we're at the very yes. outer. He's not, yeah, he hasn't even actually crossed. Well, he just, he's just crossing over um, right. Acheron um, in this chapter. So we're at like the, yeah, we're at guess, Hell's Courtyard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's why these people are rushing to get in. Um, Maybe because, I don't know, Um, just a thought, but maybe because they haven't decided for anything. 
This is the very beginning of deciding for something that they rush in. Is that possible? Well, that, those, this actually, those are actually two different groups of. So he's describing. So the earlier in the in the in the canto, he's describing uh, a group that uh, that is like kind of like wandering around. That's like before okay. he sees Charon. So it's the group of soul. It's two different groups of souls that he's seeing. Different groups. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so the, yeah, the, like he definitely seems to tell us that the the ones that are that never committed are just kind of stuck. Like he hell won't receive them at all because he right. doesn't want anything to do with them either. So okay, so he says here. Then looking onward, I made out a throng assembled on the beach of a wide river. Yeah. Whereupon so, I turned to him, Master, I long to know what souls these are and what strange usage makes them as eager to cross as they seem to be in this infected yeah. light. So At a which different sage, group of souls than he was talking about earlier. Right. Says, all this shall be made known to you when we stand on the joyless beach of Asheron. Mm -hmm. And I cast down my eyes, sensing a reprimand. <laughs> He's easily shamed, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so so yes. there's a group then that's not, that's just like, I don't know, stagnant. I think of a stagnant pond with algae growing on it, and it reeks. That's kind of what... You know, like he talks about them having uh, their faces streaming with bloody gouts of pus and tears that dribbled to their feet to be swallowed there by loathsome worms and mag maggots. Yeah. Right. So there's that. There's just one stagnant group that just doesn't choose anything. I just want to say one thing really quickly. Um, I want to go back to the to the inscription on the gates again. It's important. Yeah. What, the last line of the inscription, which is which is very, which is like almost everyone mm -hmm. knows abandon all hope ye who enter here it's important to remember who's speaking because it makes like if you read the entire thing it makes it very clear that the speaking voice that's speaking these words that are in the inscription is is a personification of hell yeah so it's hell's command to abandon it's not god's command to abandon hope it's hell's command to abandon hope but who built, who raised, who raised it? Right. Sacred justice moved my architect. I was raised here by divine omnipotence, primordial love, mm -hmm. and ultimate intellect. So there's a, there's a, I think uh, Vernon in his commentary on Canto 3 um, suggests that for Dante, Dante here is influenced by Aristotle, who actually views justice as um, something that we resort to when love fails. So um, that it is because love has failed that we that we need to resort to justice. Mm -hmm. Just. I think, uh, yeah. I think, I think I would just, I, I think I would rather leave it ambiguous as to who the architect is. Sure. I don't think that necessary. I don't think that. I think we, I think we assume that the architect is God is because we are very, very ignorant about what we really are. Okay. What's divine omnipotence <laughs> then? Then. Like I was raised here by divine omnipotence. Mm -hmm. We'll just keep. We'll just keep it open. We'll keep it open. <laughs> you got something going on. I can see. Well, I here. just like I don't want. I don't. I'm just trying to decide how many of my cards I want to lay on the table. Yeah, no, don't any... do that. Don't do it. Just keep. So keep a few. It's like I'll just like I'll, yeah. I would say that. Um. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that for now. Yeah. Yeah, I did. There was something I wanted to. Um. Oh, there'll be plenty of opportunity. I'll leave that. I think. I think. Well, it's just. Uh. We'll just. We'll just. 
any closing thoughts i think we should we should probably should look yeah. to wrap this one up we can, yeah that's too bad it's just the two of us could have been a ton of really great yeah it's really nice to have more voices um mm -hmm. for sure although i really enjoyed this to be honest with you sherry yeah me too I think we went some places we wouldn't have gone with a larger group that were very, very interesting. Um, yeah. I don't know how the kind, like, I don't know how, in, how indulgent our other conversations partners would have been for some of the directions we went here. That's true. <laughs> well, my only, my only closing thought is uh, can't wait for Canto four because it ends with like one whom sleep comes over in a swoon. I stumbled into darkness and went down. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because that's how my poem that I read last time kind of ended. Right. And you, you will love me on pure white linen and I, I will stumble. Mm. That's great. Let's end on that note. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>